Hey everyone, John here, and machine embroidery and embroidery fonts go hand in hand. The question I always get is, are all fonts created equal? Definitely not. In this video, you're going to see why. Before we get started, if you like these videos, make sure you give it a like and make sure you ring that bell and subscribe so you're notified every time we come out with a new video. Now we're going to talk about lettering real quick because there are different types of lettering for embroidery. There are stitch file fonts which are fonts that have been converted to formats that your embroidery machine can actually read. You can usually load those into your software, do layouts, all that good stuff. But then there is fonts that are specific to each software program. Now I'm using Hatch here and in Hatch we have what's called an ESA font which is an embroidery specific alphabet and they are not just stitch files but they are object based and I'm going to show you some really cool things that you can do with a font that you probably can't do with any machine file format and you probably can't do with most software programs so let's get started. Now I've already done a layout on screen of this font and I've done it a few different ways and this is a new font that we have available called Sequence. And within the Sequence font if I highlight that object and I go to lettering on the, on the uh, object properties you'll see that it's Sequence 30 millimeters and that 30 millimeters is the minimum height that I usually assign to an ESA font. If you see a number there, that's my suggested minimum. You can go larger and you can go a little bit smaller, but those are the actual, uh, I guess, parameters in which the design was digitized and you'll always get the best results at that size. Now with this file, if I turn off the true view, you're going to see that this design actually has a 35 millimeter height so I did adjust the height a little bit larger and then I repeated it a bunch of times within the sequence view you see all of these colors now this one at the top which is highlighted right now that is the exact font the way it is absolutely no changes made to this design whatsoever and all of the effects or properties whether it is a satin stitch or a fill stitch or raised satin, the effects that you can do. These are the tabs that allow you to make all of those changes. Now keep in mind that this sequence font, I actually did it with the intent that you could maybe put a little bit of bling in those uh, holes that are in the center. And that's exactly what we did with these. We used a hot fix gun, some rhinestones, and after the design's done, we took those and we put a little bit of bling in each of those circles and it does look great. Now the next design is the exact same font, same parameters, didn't really change much within that, but I did use one of the tools within the software after I selected the object or the items that I wanted to actually uh, create layouts to. On my toolbox under create layouts, there is a create outlines and offsets. And what I did was I clicked that button and then you get another uh, properties box that shows up where you can outline all of the objects. So if I just wanted to put a running stitch or another stitch type around that lettering itself, I can do that at the click of a button. But then there's one called offset outlines where I can control the amount of space from that object moving out. So in this case we have you know 3.8 millimeters, I could have it 2 millimeters, whatever I want to set, and I can control the amount of offset count. So how many lines of stitches I want to move out and that's what I did within these objects right here is I clicked that button and these were then the offsets now I did go in here and I changed it from a regular uh, stitch or a regular run stitch to a triple pass that means there's going to be three passes of thread it'll give it a little bit more of a bold look and I do have a variable outline so it keeps the stitch length fairly consistent on all of them. And I should also mention that on that object, I did tell it within the settings to actually include holes. And you can see on the inside of the G, it didn't only do um, you know, outlines around the outer part of the object, but any holes, which would be in the center of an O or a G, it will look at that as well so you have consistently, consistency in both directions. Now the next example is where we start to have some real fun. If I highlight the first color, which is the one underneath of the next color, 
I duplicated that font two times, so one on top of another, and then I started to play with the settings. So I actually kept it a satin stitch, but under the effects, I have it actually a feathered side. And the feathering is going on side two, which is the outside of the object. If I did it on side one, it would actually feather towards the inside of the object. And you can do both sides if you want. But this way I get that sort of sporadic feathery look and I also did go and change the maximum stitch length so I increased it from the default of three to six so that it's going to fan right out. And you can also, uh, I guess, change the raggedness of that effect so I can have stitches that look a little bit more ragged or jagged and I can control that which when I do put one on top of the other I did make sure that I went in and changed some of the settings under the density of the first one it's actually 0.5 millimeters of space between the stitches which is a little bit looser density than standard 0.4 is usually the the normal so I loosened up the density a bit but then on the second one I increased the density even more it's actually gone from 0.5 to 0.6 so I'm trying to make it kind of that sporadic look I made sure they weren't identical so it would give you know even a little bit more of a difference and even in the effect I changed it to a very high jaggedness so that it would kind of uh, you know spray out a little bit more and what you get when you do that is this effect here which looks kind of random it looks awesome and you can still put those rhinestones in the center of each of the little holes now the last one has a totally different effect and we're using a totally different stitch type. If I look at the outline stitches, I actually have changed it to a stem stitch. I have three passes of thread and I adjusted the angle. And this is where you can really have a lot of fun within a design. If I zoom into the L and I select that object again, and if I look at how I can change the effect by changing the angle, if I go to 20%, it's going to give me a totally different look than it would going to 90%. So you can get very, very different looks by changing the angles, as well as changing the thickness and the strokes, which is the amount of thread that's being thrown on each pass. So this is a really fun one to actually use, but you do have to be a little bit careful with it. If I zoom back out, so let's just go here, go back to full screen, I'm gonna get this right up and I'm gonna turn off the true view. And when I turn off the true view, you can see that there's little circles and triangles between each and every one of the objects. When I converted it to that stitch type from the original stitch type, it went in and looked at all of these pieces and it's given me little trim functions for each one. Within the show, if I turn off the shapes and if I turn off the actual functions, you'll see that those little triangles which are trims disappear but you don't want that to happen on a machine. You don't want it to trim after each piece because it just takes more time, wasted time. Keeping in mind that on some machines you won't even notice it because it won't actually command a trim function on stitches if they don't exceed a certain length. But that depends on each machine and the setups and parameters within it. So I'm gonna to try to fix that within the software. So just in case if that did happen, we wouldn't have all of those individual trims. And the way I would do that is I would select the entire object, I would then go to my stitching, and under this uh, stitching here where it says automatic trims, I could turn that off completely, and if I turn it off, you'll see they all disappeared, or what I can do is I can change that stitch length because I might still want a trim if it's jumping to another object. So turning them all off might not necessarily be a good thing because I don't, don't want to have a uh, you know thread going from the C to the Y if it's going to connect. But if I do come in here and change this number from a four to an eight and see what happens, now for the most part it's gotten rid of most of the trims. I might even take this up to a nine and now it's gotten rid of a few more. And I could go all the way up to a 12 and see if it changes any of those properties. This is still much better than it was before. So just by going in and changing that setting, you can reduce a lot of trims within a group of stitches that you might not necessarily want those commands in. So a little bit of playing, but that's the beauty of the ESA font is you can change pretty much everything from stitch type to the you know trims how it reacts on the machine and that's why it is an object base embroidery specific alphabet 
So there we have one font, four unique layouts. So let's take this to the machine, see how it runs, and the proof is always in the stitching. Let's see what we get. Well, the machine ran beautifully and the design came out incredibly well. We love that extra little bling that we put in there with the rhinestones. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.